So Rob, we've come to Yorkshire today to Metcalf Farms, yep. uh, which you're, you, you belong with the family here. Yeah. So uh, maybe could you give us a history yeah, of the so whole business and the family? My great granddad Frank started the business um, about Second World War time and uh, he started up with a few cows and then handed it over to me granddad who passed away at Christmas time and uh, before he retired from it he passed it on to um, my, th my two uncles and my dad so there's three brothers in the business now and they took it on from a very young age and have really pushed it on through the last 10-15 years to what it is now and uh, slowly it's been handed over to me and my th well my two cousins and my brother and every day we're taking on more responsibility and so, it's a very diverse business now like yeah very diverse few diversifications it all started with the cows and then we went into contracting and uh, after that we, we started a haulage business and now you know we're running concrete out of our yard we've got a quarry running out selling limestone and uh, we've got tr uh, training on site for for hgv drivers We've got vets on site as well, so the vets are very close by for our animals. Yeah. And slowly starting to store things here as well, so okay. it's yeah. turning into quite a big business park as such. Yes. Yeah, no, and, and like it, it's it's employing obviously a lot of people in the rural area as well, which is is a great benefit. Yeah, there's there's lots of employees here, locally sourced, and uh, a few a few from a bit further afield. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely providing a lot of jobs out there. No, locally great. so so look what we might do is we might i suppose look what what's close to us is obviously cows and that's our business so we we might have a look at the the whole dairy set up here first yes and we might have a quick tour of whatever what else is going on in the yard here as well yeah okay so we might start with the rotary yeah okay okay well, rob we go to cups and so over here yeah so over here just here is where the cups go on and then behind is where the teats are prepped yeah with a brush so you have two, two raised platforms? Two raisable platforms. It can also sink down a little bit as well. All for operator comfort. Yeah. Um, so you have a stainless cabinet there. What's behind that? Just water supply for the deck wash. Yeah. Um, a few electronics, if I remember rightly. OK. Locked to keep people out. Yeah. So it does, and it's locked for a reason in that there's no changes to whatever routine is there. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. So anything routine. Um, that doesn't need altering is usually behind tamper-proof cabinets. Okay. Stuff like um, that tap there, you can alter. That just turns it on and off. That doesn't alter the pressure. Yes. Um, all very simple, easy to train people. Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, keep it consistent, really. Yeah. Routine is key in a big operation like this. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the benefit of the race platform. So it's it's really just for uh, operator comfort. It's we get a, all sorts of staff working for us. Um, different heights that, that's it really people like um, they like milking putting the uh, prepping and putting the cups on they might like to be a bit higher so their arms yeah. are stretched out yeah. some people like to be bunched up it's more just uh, to give them the best chance I know the best comfort because when you're doing it for four hours it's, it is a long time it's without a break stint. so yeah. that's that's all it is really yeah um, so it's coming up to quarter to twelve there's lads coming in to get ready for milking, is there? Yeah, so cows will be in the collecting yard for mm -hmm. quarter past 12. Yeah. Um, and then they'll be starting at about half 12, okay. give or take. Okay. So what's our tea prep is done here? What? Tea preparation? Tea, tea or... preparation here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's and the first job a... here, is it? Yeah, that's the first job. Yeah. Um, what's this device here? It's obviously something to do with... This is old, so we used to use other cloths. Okay. And this, uh, this would store them all. Yeah. It's empty at the moment. Yeah. Um, we went on to the cow brush and we're finding more benefit for them okay. through the brush than cloths. Okay. So we're using that at the moment. Yeah. Left it in just, just in case we decided to go back. That's it really. Yeah. It's not in the way. It can yeah. be pushed back. Um, the idea was the dirty ones, it does pull out more. The dirty ones get thrown into the back and there's okay. a washing machine through okay. there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not being used at the moment. Okay. So. This, this section here then, what's this device doing? A steam cleaner, yeah. sorry, a pressure washer, not yeah. steam cleaner, yeah. um, and that just jets the clusters as they pass through. Okay. It's enclosed to try and keep the mist out and off the cows and off the, off the workers. Yes. So clusters come on here, which we'll see probably in a minute. Is it here where you put on the clusters? The yes. Operator, clusters on here then. Yeah. So 
that it's quite um, it's quite intense, so all they have to think about is putting the clusters on. They don't do any other work around the yeah. parlour. Yeah. Um, they can fall behind quite quickly, so they, they need to be focused and uh, and keeping up with the with the swing of things, really. Okay. So you have a, obviously a, seat, a camera system here or screen. Yeah, that monitors where the cows leave the parlour. Yeah. They'll reverse off the parlour, turn around, and go down a race system back to groups, single file. Mm. Uh, that camera, we have that there. The person who puts clusters on will keep an eye on that and then they'll radio if they think it's getting too crowded in there and then someone will go around and uh, just shoot them on. Okay. And then it's nice and uh, nice and free okay. to move through again. Yes. So does this matter area here any particular reason? Um, I yeah. think they were experimenting with where the people were stood in terms of timings of when to put the clusters on, yeah. uh, when they were getting, um, when the clusters were getting pulled off the cows. And it might be in the future that we have to move that platform, yeah. but we're still experimenting. Yeah, fine. So it's a bombastic parlour anyway. When was it put in? It was put in, it was completed 2015, I think, yeah. or 2016. Yes. Um, so that's about, I think it's been in about six or seven years. Okay. How many points in it? 72. Okay, yeah. And what did that replace once upon a time? How was here before? We had a full wood, 16 aside, rapid exit parlour. Yeah. Um, we were milking 900 cows a day, all day through that, three times a day. Yeah. The parlour was only getting rested for about half an hour. Yeah. Um, it was, it was too much, so yeah. I went down to twice a day while we installed this, and then now we're all finished milking within five hours. That's okay. um, starting up and washing out, okay. so it's, it's taken the load, load off uh, the staff, it's taken load off the equipment, it's much more efficient, and uh, it's much more pleasant as well to have milking, so... Yes. Um, yeah. Good. So your wash area over here? Yeah, so main milk pipe overhead. Um, it's a very small pipe, but you don't, like on a conventional herringbone parlour, for example, when you put one side on, you get that massive rush of milk. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's only one cow, one, one, one cow on, one cow off, you don't get that massive rush of milk. Okay. You only need a small pipe. Yeah. Um, that feeds into a vessel, which then feeds through plate coolers. Yeah. We've got water plate coolers and a glycol plate cooler and it cools the milk down rapidly yes. down to about two degrees celsius and we just pump it straight onto the tank so we don't yeah. actually store any milk at all yeah it's a huge they're huge plate coolers yeah they're massive and i suppose it obviously they need this you need the size because you're going straight into the yes the truck yeah so uh, whatever temperature it comes out of the cow it needs to be down to that temperature to be pumped straight on um, we don't pasteurise anything. We don't. Yeah. We don't do anything. It yeah. needs to be on at a certain temperature, and they need to come straight for it that day, okay. uh, in order for them to do the pasteurising. Yeah. So I suppose just as we're here, we just look at the trailers outside. Yeah. So is it Payne, Payne's Dairies you're supplying? Supplying Payne's Dairies. Yeah. And uh, we're sending two Arctics a day. Okay. So. How many liters roughly? Rough, roughly about 48,000 litres a day is okay. going off the farm. It was yeah. up to about 50,000, uh, but it's just come back a bit, just yes. I think due to silage quality and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, two of these will leave the farm every day. And is it weighed before it leaves as well? Is yeah. What you're yeah, we have a weigh bridge on site, so yeah. we're keeping records, they're keeping records, yeah. everything's, uh, everything's traced. Something like you'd see in America, this? Yes, yeah. 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 Okay, so what's the milk use for then? What's, what's the end product that they're producing it for you? Just goes to, um, it just goes to pains and then it's just going for milk for supermarkets, into smaller a, supermarkets. Into bottles, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's the potential for cheese in the future, but there's no, none of our milk's going for cheese at the moment. Yeah. So. Good. So cups off here? Yeah, the cups come off around here and they pass under a bridge. Yeah. It must go underneath the bridge. If they go over, they'll smash. It's quite expensive, so yeah. we'll usually have someone stood round here, keeping an eye on the computer for uh, any that have kicked off or not giving the amount of milk they're supposed to. 
and uh, they can hold them or, um, or keep them going and then take them off right before the end sort of thing. Because okay. usually they'll come off around here. Okay. They can let them, get, just give them that extra few seconds if they need it. Yes. Um, and they all also um, dip any cows that they think that the, um, the locating sprays have missed. So these little uh, pads underneath them, they'll, they'll locate the cow's teeth and spray any uh, post spray. Right. So yeah. if, if any of them miss them, which isn't very often, they can keep an eye out for that and cup them with, uh, with them. So how many people are involved in making operations, say? Uh, Three okay. in the parlour and yeah. two out in the yard. On yeah. a night, yeah, yeah they, um, on a night they'll only use four, okay. four people. Because yeah. um, they don't have to, we, we don't put bed in the cubicles on a night. We just rake them. So, so your first, you'll have cows here in the collecting yard now for quarter past 12, which we're coming yes. up to. Uh, what's the next time then later on? To, when was the next shift start or the next time they'll appear back again, cows? They'll appear back at quarter to eight. Yeah. And then they'll start milking at eight. We are starting a bit earlier today because we're milk recording. Yeah. So that's why the cows are coming in now. Okay. And say then in the morning, how early? Say tomorrow morning, would they appear again then? Tomorrow morning, cows on the deck for quarter past four okay and then we'll start milking at half four okay yeah yeah so you, you have a screen here would you do much operations here on this screen yeah we, we view um all 72 stalls will appear on the screen when it's in milking mode and then that'll give all the data once the uh, collar's been id'd it'll bring the cows up and it uses like a color system and that's how you identify uh, any that have uh, not given the amount of milk or, you know, there's lots of information on there that the, the milkers need, so... Yeah. And if there's anything that needs to be altered or changed, they can pop into the office and go okay. on the computer, which is just behind that wall. Okay. So it's not far away. Yeah. This here then? Just Rob? waste milk. Okay. It goes to a special waste milk drain. Okay. Uh, we try and keep the waste milk out of the rainwater yeah. collection ponds. Yes. It gets pumped to a tank, which then we pump into a lagoon down the fields okay. for the waste. So waste there's no milk. carrying mil big distances then either? No. So with your buckets, you're dumping it here? Straight here, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. handy. If there's any uh, any withdrawals or anything, it yeah. all goes down the drain. It's not fed to cars, basically. It's just dumped, whatever yes. you're done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So as we look back at the collecting yard, how many cows can you hold there, roughly? Roughly... Where, so where the gate's at now, yeah. it, the gate might just go back a little bit further. Yeah. Um, with the gate closed, I'd say close to 200 yes. in, in there. Yes. Uh, with the backing gate down, maybe 170. Yeah. It, it's enough to hold one big group of cows. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, once they've gone so far, they'll let the next group come behind them at their own pace. Then when these have milked out, they'll lift the backing gate up and yeah. chase the rest of it. Yeah. So the backing gate is a electromic. It's that typical one where it pulls straight through. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. It works well. Yeah. Really yeah. well. Forces everything up. Yeah. yeah. It makes a nice as as the, as it comes forward, the the area in here becomes smaller, and uh, we find that there's no gaps on the parlour if used correctly. Yeah. It does have an automatic function. Um, it will move forward periodically um, as the cows get. Uh, identified on the parlour. It measures the amount of cows that are going on the parlour and then it will creep forward. So okay, it's reacting to that. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's very, um, you know, you don't have to take too much attention to it. Yeah. Really. So auto ID then, is that on the bale somewhere or where is that on? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's just there. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. you can see that. Yeah. So eggs are wise then, I'm looking at race one, race two. Race yeah, we have two eight. races, uh, one race with a foot bath and one r race with segregation gates. Yeah. Um, we can type in any cow n numbers on the computer and we can set them to seg. Throughout the course of the milking, those cows, they'll be identified and segged off into these pens. Yeah. So it's very handy. Yeah. We use it all the time. Um, it's a it's a clearer route through on that one. So on a night they'll use the um, the race two because they'll go through quicker. The race with the foot bath it takes a little bit longer as yeah. they go trying to get through the foot bath. Yeah. Because um, they're a little bit cautious. Okay. Cows, so. So the races then are sheeted as well for obvious. Is a better movement when they're sheeted? Yes. Yeah. So they, they less time for them to stop and stare and yeah. and you know um, we find that with the uh, 
with the plastic board in, they'll just they just want to look straight ahead and go. Yeah. And it curves round in a nice uh, in a nice bend. Yeah. So um, the, 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 the cow flow is very good then for that reason. Very so, good, and yeah. uh, we made it ourselves. So okay. Uh, that that. Um, yeah, that was quite a big project making that, getting all the angles right, and but we got there eventually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when they're drafted, then you have your various holding pens. Yeah, we've got uh, two gates, two holding pens. We can split them into four if we need to, um, but there's two segregation gates. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, two pens yeah. really. You can, you can yeah. do some, move them across, and then do the rest. So you have your head locking barriers then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what functions are you doing in here or what jobs would you do? Is it AI or is it more...? No, we do... We have uh, self-locking yokes right throughout the sheds. So we do all the iron in the sheds. Yeah. Um, in here it's, it's mainly just um, if we're doing group changes, if we're moving them from group to group, yeah. we'll segregate the moved animals into here and then when the group they're moving to is going back to parlour, we'll then send them send them with them. Okay. So it's it's more mainly just group changes. Yes. Um, that's all it, that's all it's used for really. Yes. If we need to jab some we can segregate them off. Um, it's quite handy during milking. Okay. If you need if you know you need to jab one or something. So yeah. So as the cows are coming in here now and they'll start milking, have you a traffic light system or how do you know when to bring the next group or is it just so the routine that's there? It's just the routine that's there, one, one group after the other. We start with um, the freshly carved cows and heifers, yeah. bring them in, and then next group, we've got the groups numbered, two, three, four, all the way to eight, and uh, we just work in order. Okay. That's how it's done. Yeah. Once they're on the parlour, the last cow from that group, we put a traffic cone on, and then uh, when the cone comes round, the operator at this point will signal over the radio to the people out in the yard that the, it's the end of the group. They'll then walk down, catch the back of it, they'll lock the gate and then they'll open the gate for them to go back to the next group with all the beds cleaned and okay. the scra scrapers running hopefully. Okay. Yeah. So there's a big team involved in this operation obviously. Yeah. 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 So down here we employ about 35 members of staff. On the milking and the On the milking feeding. and the feeding okay. and the calves. Yeah. So everything down here, not the contracting or the haulage or office staff, just yeah livestock people um, 35. 35 yeah it's yeah. a big it's a big concern it's a big employer yeah yeah and most of those people as well we've got a few full times the half and half full times and a few of them are part times some people come and do a morning shift before they work the day job like they're nine to five okay uh, they'll come and milk here and then they'll go to their job okay and some people work a day job and then they'll do the night shift so okay so uh, you know Extreme people enjoy people. it yeah yeah very flexible as well um we can we can um take people on and fit them in whenever it suits the personal lives and, and yeah. everything really yeah there's great so, options for people there yeah definitely yeah. we like to um not push we, we like to employ more people and be well on top of things rather than push have less people and push and yeah and suddenly be very short and in a big mess when when someone can't come in yes for example health or some health reasons or something so so just i'm looking here in a nice office area i suppose you've a good view yeah we, so. we can view all the cows coming off this is where all the seg gates are controlled from yeah um, we've got the freezer full of the, sorry the fridge full of uh, medicines and stuff for the cows everything's very close by and handy mm. um, all the computers with all the uh, the parlor software the data recording software yeah everything's done through here very good I mean, so how many cows are you making here now at the minute so 1300 yeah. and about 1150 in okay. milk and the rest dry Great. so 